if they say that they gained 100,000 jobs in one month and their revision was actually it was 100,000 jobs, the administration's lying to you point blank. And then they're having to cover their backsides by saying, oh, we're making a revision. We've all been seeing the news that inflation's coming down, right? So the difference in what we need to see. So I, I did a little bit of research, right? We've got two different terms that we need to be looking at here. We've got deflation and disinflation. Disinflation meaning that inflation has peaked and every period it's lower, right? So we have seen disinflation. We've seen a 9% increase in inflation at one point, and now we're down to like a 3% increase in inflation. But keep in mind that while deflation, not disinflation, while disinflation is happening, prices are still, still not getting better. When it's 3% inflation, that still means 3% from a year ago when it was 9%. So you're stacking inflation at that point. We've yet to see any time of measurable deflation, which in all reality is what we need, right? If we're going to see deflation, right? If we're going to see prices come down in assets, right? And when we're talking about um, homes, when we're talking about autos, when we're talking about all these different things that generally you need an interest rate associated loan, right? And when the rates go up, the only way you can afford the loan is for the price to come down. The only way we're going to see that is for real deflation to occur. I was driving down the highway here in Dallas, and I saw uh, a billboard outside of one of the uh, main car dealers there, right? The colored car dealers in Dallas, you know, they, they have like 50,000 cars on lot, humongous cars. And this, this billboard out front said 24% off in 2024. And I was like, ooh, they're really hurting. If they're offering 24% off new Ram trucks or whatever it is, they must be really hurting. So Janet Yellen said Wednesday that inflation could face a bumpy return to normal after back-to-back -back reports showed price pressures within the U.S. economy rebounded at the start of the year. In a sit-down inter interview with Fox Business, uh, Yellen pushed back against stagflation concerns and maintained that progress on inflation has not stalled. Let's take a moment to define stagflation. An economy characterized by high inflation, low economic growth, and high unemployment. That's not where we're seeing right now um, because it, the employment rate is really low. But I think the employment rate is low in all reality because people are having to take more than one job. And you know what? It, it bog, boggles my mind constantly is the um, employment number revisions. Uh, I just, I mean, it, it's constant. Every single month, pay attention to the stat from now on. I, I I forget what it was. Forgive me. I just got back from vacation. But I heard uh, a stat about last month's being revised, basically down the amount of the entire previous month. And, and this is something that I track because I find it really interesting. Every month, every month, every time you see the inflation numbers come out, wait just a hot minute for the revisions. And they are going to be 50% or so of what the prior month's growth was, meaning that if they say that they gained 100,000 jobs in one month and their revision was actually it was 100,000 jobs, the administration's lying to you point blank. And then they're having to cover their backsides by saying, oh, we're making a revision. I mean, there was a one point last year where it was uh, one month was like 239,000 jobs or whatever, huge blockbuster month. And then quietly they said, oh yeah, but 175,000 jobs over the last three months need to re be revised off. So basically, three quarters of the jobs we said over the last three months never actually existed. So how can we trust this month? It's just continuous. So prices for everything, including groceries, new cars, and health insurance surged in 2021 as a result of rampant inflation, which was caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. We all know that. And extremely tight labor markets increased consumer demand fueled by stimulus, right? Stimulus cash. Inflation has fallen considerably from 9.1%. This is what we're talking about. It remains above the Federal Reserve's 2% target. Uh, however, let's not forget that cumulative inflation, inflate, cumulative inflation, cumulative inflation is now up at least eighteen and a half percent. At least, at least eighteen and a half percent in that time. So we're not out of the woods just yet. We're still fighting through this. Leo, good to see you. Welcome back. Thanks, man. Uh, Watch channel. Hey, good morning. High inflation has created severe financial pressures amongst basically all U.S. households, with more people having to. <clears throat> Uh, pay more for necessities like food and rent. The burden is disproportionately borne by low-income Americans. Absolutely. So here's what I'm talking about, right? I'm glad this chart's here. I didn't actually know. I haven't read through this chart yet. So um, we're looking at this. 
And the inflation, yes, it has peaked and yes, it has come down. This is the disinflation I'm talking about. So disinflation, meaning that it is not rising, right? It's actually coming down. But the issue is that even though these numbers are down, keep in mind, this is still stacked. This is still cumulative from everything previous, right? So if we're stacking, 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 and then we're adding 3% down here, that's still 3% higher, 3% higher, 3% higher. So that's how the cumulative inflation is still so much higher than what they're trying to tell you month over month. Man, there's lots of people who are actually out there fighting tooth and nail saying inflation's over. We won. We just did a, a clip a couple of weeks ago. Bill Maher, the comedian Bill Maher, who cares what he has to say, was talking all about how we've won the war on inflation. Jillian Michaels, of all people, the, the trainer from Biggest Loser, was like, bro, what are you even talking about? Right. The inflation number may be down, but overall, things are still so much higher. Uh, although there has been some price, uh, although there have been some signs recently that inflation is proving to be stickier than expected, Yellen has pushed back against these woes. Keep in mind, this is the woman that said inflation is transitory. Keep in mind, she was 1000% wrong. Inflation is transitory. Now she's saying, oh, yeah, of course, it's not going to be sticky. So listen, whatever she has to say, I don't believe it for a second. I don't think we're going to see stagflation. Most forecasters believe we're on a path where inflation will come down over time. Well, by God, I hope so. You know, said that she expects the cost of rental housing, which is one of the largest drivers of inflation, to fall in the coming months as tenants sign leases with lower rents. Bro, how are tenants going to find those leases with lower rents? Please tell me. If you're out there trying to find rental units right now, where are you finding them? Put them in the comments. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people would like to know. Put it in the comments. Where are you finding lower rents? Because I'm sure that that is not a thing. Trust me, those landlords, they're looking at you and they're saying, I have to live month to month from your paycheck month to month. And I am not at all going to take a pay cut because I know for sure you aren't out there taking pay cuts. So there's nowhere that a landlord's going to be lowering that. I have every expectation the single biggest contributor to inflation is going to be moving down this year. Give me a break. Janet is as accurate as the local weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Now, here is a stock that uh, I think has a lot to do with inflation because I just got back from Disney World yesterday. And so I want to take a look at the Disney World uh, signals here inside of Outlier, right? In fact, we can zoom in just a little bit and see we got a sell signal for Disney on February 27th. And that was coming on the back of a January 29th buy signal. And in fact, following these signals, um, oh, wow, look at this. Outlier shows a 19% return, while buy and hold is down 24.46%. So having these outlier signals in your back pocket is absolutely one of the main things that you need to do to stay active and to stay current and stay on top of things in this market. Now, I would definitely recommend you heading over to outlierdeal.com. We have a sale going on right now. It's basically 99% off a lifetime license, and that will be ending here in the next couple of weeks. So like I say, a sell signal on February 28th for Disney. So if you're a Disney shareholder, uh, inflation may not be benefiting you, but I tell you what, I certainly helped benefit the bottom line of Disney this quarter, <laughs> without a doubt. Janet Yellen warns inflation decline might not be smooth. This person says, I had respect for her as Fed chairperson, but she's a sellout, a pure politician. All right. Yellen's been talking about a soft landing now for years, and all of a sudden, we've lost the smoothness. Well said, Stephen. She's giving off some real Jim Cramer vibes right now, or where uh, everything is the, the opposite, right? I suggest that inflation is now, and this person says, I suggest that inflation is now built in. And there's a risen floor to it that has nothing to do with what the government wants. There is a, a, a risen floor to this. Absolutely. Every, everybody sees that, right? You're getting used to paying these higher prices. But we as consumers can fight back. We as consumers can say, I'm not going to go to McDonald's. I'm not going to buy the $18 Big Mac meal. Bro, I could go to Chili's and get a meal for $18. It, probably including a drink. So we can fight back against this, right? But it takes uh, us consumers to actually do something about it. Stop paying those high prices. Uh, Brian asks, what's the blue line in Outlier? So the blue line in Outlier is our um, directional uh, price trajectory oscillator. This is probably, Brian, the most important signal inside of Outlier. Because when this is moving up, you can be looking for an uptrend inside of uh, uh, on the price. When this is moving down, you can be looking on a downtrend in price. And if you look right here, it's starting to trend down. The line is not super easy to see, 
when you're zoomed in like this. But if you zoom out, it gets a lot easier to see just how much that line is starting to come down. So absolutely, that price trajectory oscillator is the blue line inside of there. And I just love this zoom feature. This 2.0 upgrade just came out today. So I am so excited for everybody to have access to this. Um, so yeah, we have some issues, um, definitely big time. And might it not be smooth? Yeah, hey, do me a favor. Up above, there's gonna be two videos from YouTube. YouTube thinks that you're going to love watching more. So click one of those to watch more and I'll see you on the next episode. Talk soon.